The cross is not a wound. The cross is the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. So when we are talking about the message of the cross, we are talking about the message that borders on the substitutionary death of Christ, the significance it holds for the Christian and the expectation that it confess on the Christian. The message of the cross is twofold. The first dimension of that message is what Christ did is what Christ brought to you is what Christ made available through his suffering the second dimension of the message of the cross is what God expects you to do because of what Christ did the two put together is what encapsulates the wholeness of the message of the cross I try to summarize these two things I've said into seven headings. number one is redemption and atonement Isaiah 53 from verse 1 to 5. Who had believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. These are the sufferings of Christ. But he's trying to show you the purpose of this suffering. Verse 3. It says he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. Acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. All of the suffering. What was it meant for? Surely he has borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God. And afflicted. For he was wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his tribes we were healed. So everything that Christ did in order to atone for your sins and secure forgiveness for you is part of the message of the cross. The second message of the cross is the manifestation of the sacrificial love of God. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life there was nothing that had the power to pay for our sins and when God didn't find anything God made himself to become a man so that he will die for us Philippians 2 from verse 5 to verse 8 think of yourselves the way Christ thought of himself for he had equal status with God but didn't think too much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. He said not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave and became human. This is the love of God. When it was time to save man, he removed all the privileges of a God. He became a man. Among men, he was a slave. And he was not just a slave. He was killed like a criminal. Can you imagine the shame? Jesus hung on the cross naked. His mother was looking at him. It's called the sacrificial love of God. This is what gives us confidence with God. That's why Paul was speaking in Romans 8.32. He said, if he did not withhold his only begotten son, but gave him freely for us, how shall he not with him? Because this is the highest demonstration of love. Jesus was speaking, even among men, men that are nothing, he said, there's no greater love than this that a man gives his life for his friend these are men that have nothing no status nothing but we are talking about the almighty the one that all the angels worship the one that the stars and the galaxies worship the one that the thunder and the lightnings worship the one that every creature worship he took off that garment forfeited worship forfeited all the privileges that made him a god and he came and walked among us he was not even born in a hospital. He was born in a manger with camels. Without recognition. They wanted to kill him. They had to escape with him at night to Egypt. The one that carries all the powers. But he kept himself vulnerable. Still demonstrating love. Number three. Victory over sin and death. 1 Corinthians 15. 55 to 57. He said death is swallowed up in victory. Oh death. Where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin in the law. He said, but thanks be to God. Who gives us victory? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How did God give us that victory? Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15. He said, Jesus blotted the handwriting of every ordinance that was written against us. He said, he took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. 
So while he was on the cross, iniquity was hanging there. Because that was the price for sin. That's why 2 Corinthians 5.21 said, God made him that was without sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he defeated sin and he defeated death. Because after he died, he rose again. Number four, victory over Satan. Colossians 2 verse 15. If you read it, the Bible said, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. What is in it is the cross. Because verse 14 told us that he nailed our sins to the cross. So at the cross, Satan was defeated. Satan thought the battle is about miracles. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. It's not about miracles, it's about surrendering. Because man fell through rebellion. Man will be redeemed through humility and surrender. Man will be redeemed through submission to the government of God. And Jesus fought that battle in Gethsemane. If it were possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, not my will but thine. So when he hung on that cross, he was defeating the one that has power over death. Number five, the message of reconciliation. Second Corinthians 5 verse 18 and 19. In fact, from verse 17, he said, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. He said, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, speaking about these new things, he said, all these things are from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and did not just reconcile us, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He said, that is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, but he entrusted them the message of reconciliation. I am a friend of God. God made it so. I'm not a stranger in the house of God. I have a vital relationship with God. Ephesians 2, 14 to 16. He said, for he himself is our peace. For he has made us both one. And has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace and reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing hostility. I am reconciled to God. God is not angry with me. Even when I err, the Bible says I shall come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy. I'm reconciled. It's not a guarantee to sin, but it's an assurance so that the devil can no longer take advantage of you. Because he's called the accuser of the brethren. And that's not all. The cross is also the message of God's power and God's wisdom. You know, when Satan was trying to kill the master, he thought when Jesus dies, everything will end. He doesn't know it was a complex wisdom that it is in dying that his purpose will be fulfilled. And so Satan helped in advancing that cause. The Bible said if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because if Jesus was not crucified, he would still be walking on earth till today. Salvation wouldn't have been possible because the man couldn't be sick. Nothing could happen to him. You would have come and they would tell you the oldest man on earth is Jesus Christ. And people would have been traveling to Jerusalem to see him. But Satan thought he wanted to be smart. Let's kill this man. Oh. The way he's going, the whole world will follow him. He didn't know that when he was alive, the Holy Ghost was trapped inside him. And what God was looking for was to release the Holy Ghost as a buffet so that everyone will carry the Holy Spirit. So when Satan wanted to kill him, he laid down his life. He said, thank you for helping fulfill this vision. Because except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So when we preach the cross, it is the wisdom of God at work. First, in that only through it will man be saved. Second, in that only through it will the anger of God be appeased. And third, in that through it, the foolishness of Satan was made manifest. And finally, which is the second dimension, the message of the cross is the message of self-denial. It is God inviting you to live like Jesus Christ. Because for Jesus to do all of these things, he had to let go of his ambition. He had to let go of his will. He had to let go of everything to be able to do this. And we were also invited to live a life of self-denial. You don't know the cross except you stop living for yourself and start living for God. Anybody living for himself has not encountered the message of the cross. The moment you get to know the message of the cross, the code of your life becomes the code of self-denial. 
Luke 9, 23. He said, if any man will follow me and be my disciple, he must first of all deny himself. Carry his cross and follow him. You are not following Jesus because you are an ardent member of a church. You are not following Jesus because you are a deacon. You are not following Jesus because you are a prophet. You are not following Jesus because you are an apostle. Jesus gave us the code for any man that will follow him. If any man will come after me, he said, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. So if you want to follow Jesus, self-denier and sacrificial living will become the code of your life. Thank you. The cross is the ultimate symbol of God's love and grace. At the cross, Jesus bore the weight of our sins, offering himself as the perfect sacrifice. This act of selfless love reconciles us with God, bridging the gap that sin created. The message of the cross reminds us that no matter our past, we are forgiven and redeemed through Christ. It's a call to embrace this grace, to live in the light of his sacrifice, and to share this hope with others. The cross is not just a symbol of suffering. It's the power of God to transform lives. The cross stands at the center of our faith, a powerful testament to the depth of God's love and the extent of his mercy. It's not merely a historical event, but an ongoing invitation to experience the transformative power of Christ's sacrifice. When we look to the cross, we see Jesus taking on our sin and shame, enduring unimaginable pain, and yet, in his final breath, declaring, it is finished. This was not a cry of defeat but a declaration of victory over sin, death, and the powers of darkness. The message of the cross is a message of hope. It tells us that no matter how deep our wounds, how far we've strayed, or how heavy our burdens, Jesus has already borne it all. His sacrifice has made a way for us to be reconciled with God, to be made new, and to live in the freedom of His grace. The cross calls us to respond not just with gratitude, but with a life surrendered to God, walking in the newness of life that Jesus purchased for us. And as we carry our own crosses daily, we are reminded that suffering is not the end of the story. The cross leads to resurrection, and through Jesus, we are promised eternal life. Let the message of the cross be your strength in trials, your comfort in sorrow, and your guide as you walk in the love and grace of Christ. God bless you.